Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, City Current CEO, Jeremy Park. Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good. And we always want to make sure you know where to go when you need help. That's why we're honored to have with us Anna Seaver, Executive Director of the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. Anna, how are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Well, suicide is a very important and needed conversation. We're going to talk all about the education, outreach, programs for the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. But let's start with a little bit of history and context. So give us some history for the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. The Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network is a statewide organization serving all 95 counties in Tennessee. And we were established in 2000 as part of a national suicide prevention movement and founded by Memphis area psychiatrist, Dr. Ken Tallis and his wife, Madge. And you know, the agency at its core is founded by those with lived experience. Maybe they themselves have struggled from suicidal ideation or attempts, or they have lost a loved one to suicide. And it is so amazing because 25 years ago, we started with one staff person And since then, we have been able to expand and grow the network to 15 staff, a 30-member advisory council, and hundreds more volunteers. When you look at what you do, it's a lot, and it's education, advocacy, reducing the stigma, a lot around raising awareness and making sure that people know the resources that are available too. So go ahead and start diving into all the things you do. Let's start unpacking them. Absolutely. Thank you. And so, you know, to your point, we ultimately want to reduce the stigma associated with suicide to promote help seeking. We know that people suffer not only from suicidal ideation and attempts, but for years following the loss of a suicide death. And we want to reduce that number of suicide down to zero. And the way that we're working to do so is by implementing the statewide suicide prevention strategy which we're in a very exciting time for suicide prevention because the 2024 national strategy was recently released. And so we're working to refine our own strategy and be more comprehensive to further impact Tennesseans and be able to provide them the resources and information they need to seek help. When you look at the education, let's start there. So I know that you do a number of workshops and talking to groups about suicide, what to look for, recommendations to be able to help. So for loved ones to be, you know, equipped with the resources, dive into the education side. Absolutely. So I think a lot of people want to help with suicide prevention, but maybe they don't know where to start. So some of the trainings we offer are foundational in nature where individuals can learn the issue of suicide and why it's so important for us to band together as a community to prevent it. And then also some of the nuances to how do you even start a conversation about suicide? Is it okay to talk about suicide? Which we know that talking about suicide can be therapeutic and is not harmful. And, um, Asking that question out loud, especially to a loved one, is very challenging. So we like to gear our trainings with role play opportunities and refine it in a way where people can practice asking that question and hearing it out loud so that when they're in a position where they themselves may need to ask to someone they love or one of their community members, they've already had that ability to practice. And so it makes that conversation hopefully a little bit easier. One of the things that you all talk a lot about is warning signs. So give us some of the warning signs that uh, you want to make sure everyone knows in terms of what to look for. Thank you. That is a great question. And when I am doing the training myself, I like to recommend that all individuals write down these top three in particular and you know, keep by your desk, keep in your wallet, because if anyone is talking about suicide, whether it seems like it's in a joking manner or very seriously, explicitly said, take that seriously. You also want to look for if somebody is acquiring means, maybe they're stockpiling pills or they're looking for a firearm. 
that is something to put you on high alert. And if anyone is relaying a plan, then that is very serious and something not to be ignored. So those are three examples, but there are many more to look for as well, which we could provide question, persuade, refer, QPR, gatekeeper training to learn more of those warning signs and also risk factors for suicide, as well as ways to respond when somebody does disclose that they're suicidal. Talk about uh, some of the stats that warm your heart in terms of the education community outreach, the number of programs and you know workshops and things. What are some of those stats that uh, warm your heart when you look at the impact you're having on that side? Absolutely. Thank you. And so this is for the last year. But we've seen for outreach that we have been as a TSPN staff members, advisory council volunteers, to over 550 events in Tennessee, providing tabling resources and being able to touch locally the community members and talk to them face-to-face about suicide. And we've seen that over 125,000 Tennesseans have been given resources during those outreach events. And for trainings, we've provided over 200 trainings, reaching over 10,000 people in this last year. And I'm really excited because our numbers doubled over uh, the same time period from the year before. And since then, we've been able to add a number of staff members, including a 10th region, our greater Nashville region serving Davidson, Rutherford, and Wilson counties. So I'm very excited to see the increased impact that we'll have at this time next year when we're looking at the data. Yeah, and I think, you know, the increased team members and capacity on your end means you can do more to get the word out to help equip and educate um, you know the audience but the state of Tennessee and so carry that into then one of the big things is pushing and promoting the number 988 and so talk about the number and what that 988 number means absolutely thank you so two years ago a little over two years ago now the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number, it's a long 1-800 number, 2738255, was what we had and what we were promoting. However, since then, we wanted to put an easier to remember dialing code. And so that 1-800 number shifted over to 988. So it's more of a two-part goal here. One, make that number more accessible for more timely access to care but then also to increase the crisis care continuum to make 988 the first number that people dial when there's a behavioral health crisis speculated to be occurring. So that's something where, you know, maybe you're not sure exactly if somebody's suicidal or exactly might might be going on with them. And that's the beauty of 988. You can call, text, or chat it 24-7, receive confidential short-term crisis counseling. And it's something that you can call whether you're just overwhelmed, if you're suicidal and need to talk, um, but you do not have to be suicidal, which is, you know, a myth. I think a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I, you know, I thought that was only if I was, you know, thinking about suicide and about to attempt, but anybody can call it for any reason. Carry that into then some of the other projects and things that you all are doing because you're doing a lot. And so touch on some of the other projects. We recently are really excited about awareness campaigns because, Jeremy, we want to know that everyone has the resources they need to seek help and that they have multiple opportunities. So we're co-branding campaigns and billboards across the three grand regions of Tennessee that include information not only about 988, but also about TSPN. And we're working to increase that awareness piece. We also are, we just recently had our statewide conference, which was elevating hope and healing for high-risk populations. We're really looking to further refine our efforts toward those that we already know have an increased risk for suicide, whether it be first responders, veterans, older adults, those with sexually marginalized communities, to name a few. And we are continuing to tailor that with our elevated risk task force and really excited to hear from one of the staff members that just in this last month that they have been able to attend specific events for high-risk populations in about 15 in the last month alone. I know that we were talking before we hit record is that, you know, the numbers for the statistics for suicide are delayed. And so you're not necessarily seeing things in real time. And when you look at 
the pandemic, opening up the floodgates, just around mental health in general, you you still are seeing very prominent stories around suicide, sadly. And so, you know, when you look at suicide and so many of us know someone or have a loved one or a family member, you know, somebody that you can kind of touch to that has been impacted by suicide, unfortunately. So it it permeates our communities. And so when you look at kind of where we were, where we are, where we're trying to go to make sure that everyone has access to this care. Talk about kind of what puts a smile on your face with success stories and kind of, you know, what you're able to see with, hey, there is a light at the end of the darkness. Thank you. Absolutely. And, you know, to your point, we know that suicide affects all populations. We're seeing over 1,200 Tennesseans are dying by suicide every year, about 25 suicide attempts for every death and even more struggling with suicidal thinking. And it's heartwarming to me because we hear a lot of anecdotal support stories about how, you know, maybe a TSPN regional director was able to talk to somebody about some of the resources available and that they were receiving incremental support, not only from their regional director that is providing support in the place where they live, work, play, and worship themselves, but then they also get that additional layer, maybe from 988, or they know about some of our additional task forces and they, hey, you know, I was able to link up with our first responders task force and come to our statewide conference where I was able to learn some of the evidence-based practices that are best for first responders. Or then I was linked up with our zero suicide program. So I'm taking back to my community organization, some of the places where we can increase our awareness and implementation of suicide prevention policies ourselves. How can the community get involved and support your efforts? Thank you. That is a fantastic question. And the first step would be to visit our website, tspn.org, and to find your regional director. Again, all 95 counties of Tennessee are served by 10 regional directors, and they are outposted in that region. And so they're out driving around in the community, going to events, and trying to meet and know as many people in Tennessee and support them as possible. And they are fantastic, compassionate, caring, hardworking people. And their contact information is on our website. We have monthly regional meetings. So one way to get involved is to come to the regional meeting and to learn more about the programs that we're currently implementing and some of the volunteer needs that we have. When you look at the volunteers and being able to spread the word like 988, touch on some of the ways that volunteers can really help further raise awareness, further the efforts, touch on some of the volunteer opportunities. Thank you, of course. You know, suicide prevention is a community effort that we cannot do alone. And one of the ways of 988 that we're promoting um, is, hey, how could you add this to you know, your community's website or maybe your church's website or one of the other creative things I've seen is, you know, when you're dialing a medical provider in their automated messaging, they say, you know, if this is a medical emergency, hang up and dial 911. Well, now I'm starting to see also in well here that people are saying, hang up if this is a behavioral health crisis and dial 988. There's so much creativity that I'm seeing, and there's so many stones that we can overturn to provide this information, and volunteers are instrumental in those efforts. So every time that we put up 988 on a bulletin board, that we put it on the website, that we're including it comprehensively in our everyday interactions, we're increasing suicide prevention. Yeah. And I think, you know, to me too, like carrying that forward, even for youth, like high school, college, young professionals, workplaces, organizations, just like you're talking about, you can play a vital role in helping others, but also raising awareness for 988 by simply doing exactly like you're talking about, integrate it in, sharing it on social media. Hey, you know, if there is a behavioral health issue or crisis, call 988, reach out, text 988, 988, you know, keep pushing that number. But I think for schools, organizations to continue putting that forward so that people know where to turn and that, you know, peer to peer, you can be helping them to make sure that they have access to the information, but access to help. 
I just think it's one way that we as a community can help each other and to let people know you're not alone. You're loved. There's opportunities for help out there. All you have to do is reach out to 988. And that's why I think these conversations are so critically important is one, the education you're doing, raising awareness, two, getting you know the 988 number out there, and three, like you said, the local contacts and opportunities for your team and volunteers to really plug in and be a part of helping to power the good. So wrap up with where we go. You mentioned the website before, and obviously we've been talking about 988, but where else do we go to learn more, to get involved with the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network? Yes, thank you. Please you know, visit our website, sign up for our monthly newsletter and our socials, whether on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram provides not only information about upcoming events, but some simple ways where you could integrate suicide prevention efforts, where you can know the effective treatments that are available, where you can get more involved as we know that social support is one of the strongest protective factors against suicide. We try and make our social media posts very friendly so that you're prepared and equipped with opportunities to support in your everyday life. Yeah, like anything, the more we know, the more we can help. So once again, everyone, the website, tspn.org, obviously the initials for Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network, the number again, 988, Anna Seaver, Executive Director of the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. Thank you for all you and your amazing team do to power the good. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Higginbotham Insurance and Financial Services is proud to power the City Current Show. We're a people-first company that protects what matters most, the families, businesses, and trailblazers that keep our community going. As one of the nation's top independent insurance firms, Higginbotham is a single source solution for business insurance, employee benefits, HR services, and personal insurance that's customized for you. We're here to serve you, the people you care about, and your community. Call 866-377-1959 or visit Higginbotham.com.